Hi, I'm Daniel, and this video will be a comparison of the Grinch movies. Adaptations often change elements and the difference between the original story and the live action movie and the Illuminations movie. I have made a couple of videos defending Illumination. This won't be as strong as the others, but I will still defend this as the better movie. Before one of my Christmas videos, I compared the two movies. I watched the original special and found it decent. I like the original Yorak special that I criticised. It has a problem with using the same song on repeat for too long, but it's a good tale. Mean Grinch decides to steal Christmas for no known reason, but changes it out when the who's there notice the presents were gone. That description doesn't stay, but do the movies work in their own right? This video contains spoilers for both movies. How the Grinch stole Christmas released in the year 2000 and became well liked. Even if most of the people who like the movie admit it's not objectively good. This opinion may be controversial, but I really don't like this movie. It takes away the subtlety and purpose of the story, while being overall likeable. I wonder why this is a yearly Christmas movie for some people with an inconsistent tone like this. I don't know where to start, so let's go to visuals first. Normally, I would expect to be a contrast of the Grinch's mounting compared to Whoville. Here, everything has a weird fog filter, and this movie barely knows how to do lighting. It's yuck shape and ugly in any location. It works for the Grinch. I don't like how Whoville looks. It may be intentional because the Who's are the bait to be as bad as the Grinch, but that would give the movie too much credit. This movie has poor effects. The set and makeup design is clearly trying to do something well, but it looks uncanny. Mighty Ball just made the Who's human. See the appeal of this Grinch, but I don't like how the face sticks out from the hair. The amount of detail makes it hard to know where the eye is supposed to be looking. It wasn't worth how painful a this makeup was. As for the rest of the movie, it was made at a time when the PG rating meant something, so movies tried hard to get it. This wanted to feel mature by including the inappropriate jokes and having a mean spirited tone for 85% of this movie. The meaner character and tone can work, but not here. The story seems negative on first glance or a mean one still on Christmas. The character of the Grinch is meant to be anti Christmas, but that story as a whole isn't with a wholesome ending. That's what makes it a classic. This movie is mostly full of everyone being unlikable and hateable. This is one path, but the movie can't even stick to that tone. Then the you who get a side pure more screen time, and it's the most OV pure child character ever. The motivations to help when trying to cure the Grinch makes it sappy. This isn't a case of well integrated juxtaposition, but this movie having drastic cutaways. This movie goes to the Grinch talking about how much he loves hazardous waste. Then it cuts to sing the you who sing a generic Christmas song. I wondered why I was there when this movie wasn't a musical. But then it got to the credits and then there was a pop song cover of that song. I have a feeling that song was only written for the pop song cover. Another thing, just put the movie forces the audience to know how good Cindy Yu Who is. That doesn't mean it should justify Whoville or the Who's as a whole. Town was supposed to be in a state of positive BS, not a town that makes the Grinch's lifestyle right. His backstory was that he was bullied for being green, so ran away to live in the mountain. Instead of thinking how the Who's still acted adult, he would have a good reason to be isolated from the people. But he barely even strikes me as isolated. This also adds the idea that the Grinch is a trickster who goes around causing trouble. The town knowing who the Grinch is is a change like this yike. The whole story works better when the Grinch is just a random person to them. This movie has a love triangle on its storm. The mayor as a villain is a pointed addition. The story is about the Grinch being a villain. You don't need commercialism and corruption personified in one character. Who has yet to pay off at the end. This movie added so much unnecessary parts to drag out the movie. He only plans to steal Christmas in the third act. This doesn't deserve the how stole Christmas of the title. The only end Christmas for like afterthought. Grinch being invited to my stage just a way to waste time. Same with most of this movie to me. The reason this movie seems to be like is for the comedy. And while some of it isn't my comedy, I personally dislike Jim Carrey in most of his roles, and personally I'm not found this version of the Grinch. And the whole style of edgy humour. However, I do see how there is an appeal of this. And I will admit there is an occasionally funny moment. Max's reindeer anti is falling off, and the Grinch of analyzing how it's a simply rejecting Christmas positions is funny. But the whole thing near the end of the Grinch says sorry was kind of funny. The commentary about commercialism is expanded upon, which I do like in theory, but it makes Whoville too product focused. There were some moments I found funny, but it was a con mentioning society as funny, not because the jokes were actually good. I doubt this part of the video was enjoyable to see through those who like this movie. But in my opinion, I really didn't enjoy this. I'm surprised to say, but yes, yeah, I reviewed the Christmas Chronicles, and it's not even the worst Christmas movie I've viewed anymore. 
Well, the Christmas Chronicles is probably objectively the worst movie. The title will probably be watched that multiple times and have to watch this again. Okay, enough of live action, on to the Illumination film. The Grinch released in 2018 at the peak of Illumination hatred. It wasn't as big before or after 2017-2019. This movie was criticised for missing the point of the story and being boring, which is kinda true. However, I think this movie is decent and has its own merit. Animation is probably Illumination's best. So far at least, for increasing the writing to make everything bright, the coloring work could there's still a contrast in making the night sky dark in the Grinch's year. Like the occasion being empty is better presented by the wide aspect ratio. Still on Christmas is also animated beautifully. As for the movie, the pace is slow, I'll explain why. It has the first act involved the Grinch going to town and being cornered by carriers, which is funny but yes young. He gets the off idea during Act 2, and the movie is about how the Grinch plans to steal Christmas. This is a decent idea of adapting a short book while still making it about stealing Christmas, but it's still dragged out. The Grinch finds a reindeer named Fred, who leaves for his family. It's not bad and cute and the could get brought back at the end, but it could be cut out. The middle is very slow, by the Grinch stealing a sleigh and practicing resisting cookies. Some mention of this later, but it just stretches out the story. This is seriously arm and yet for dragging out, and I like using this meme as comparison between the studios. There's also a side plot about Cindy Yu Hu, but here she is an actual character and not just someone to preach the message. She wants to help her overworked mother, so plans to trap Santa to speak to him. I like how she has a good motivation, but is not obnoxiously pure. Both plots being while planning to do something is thematically tied, although the parts with Cindy are weaker. It feels like most of the plan could be cut and happen off screen, we didn't need multiple friend characters. I think the main aspect of the movie change is the Grinch himself, he mainly pretends to hate Christmas and is socially awkward. I like this choice to differentiate the story, but the movie should stick with the decision and get rid of the parts from all versions. Before we miss the song, the cover is fine but it doesn't work in inclusion. It was originally played when the Grinch was being evil, here it just when Max is making him coffee. Yivik's don't apply. Cuddy as a cactus, that the sign is too appealing with the fair looking soft. Kinda makes you want to buy merchandise. As far as that, I don't think the scenes from in town fit the change of this character. Not everything is adjusted, but what makes it work is exploring the Grinch's form of the higher day. There's one scene where the Grinch accidentally shoots himself into Whoville and gets vision of the past. Who's being too busy and notice him as an orphan, keep the story working. Them being genuinely oblivious is better than focusing on single people's actions. I know it's against the original story to give the Grinch a backstory, but I don't care with scenes like this. The camera becomes shaky and blurry as it cuts through time to assemble a panic attack. The only of the young Grinch is greatly presented with stuff like the Christmas tree sound to disappear. Still on Christmas is done as a coping mechanism, and I don't think it's a problem that the Grinch is very mean. I think it made sense for the Grinch to be nice to Max and Fred. It makes the Grinch understandable without pulling the hues down, and I like how this handles the Grinch's realisation and him coming back. The often offbeat tone of this movie is contrasted by science as the Grinch says he thought it would fix something that happened years ago. I felt that yeah in the way he said it to apologise before walking away, but the Hughes don't say anything so the audience and the Grinch don't know what they're thinking. The ending involves Cindy Yoohoo coming to him to invite him to the dinner and the whole scene creates an amazing awkwardness. It remains happy and the ending 10 minutes almost forced me to forget all the problems with most of the movie. It goes on to young, the message about commercialism is skipped and there isn't enough comedy. This is that note because this movie can be funny when it tries, but it mostly resorts to thinking non-jokes are jokes. Still, the Grinch is overhating and the great elements are cancelled over. This movie is enjoyable enough and a way better Grinch movie. Now for the comparison. I normally compare each aspect, but I'm making an assumption that Illumination did all better. Some may be more subjective than others. I you just make comparative statements. You like how Max the dog is good in both movies. That's the and pet for the Grinch to interact with. In the youth who drags out both movie stories, what is clearly improved in the Illumination movie? And both have an added backstory. There's a better framing device and content shown. Whoville aren't perfect, but are still a happy and caring town. My reviews of both have hopefully justified what movie I think is better. In conclusion, a video about both Grinch adaptations was planned for a while to be this Christmas. I'm mainly done reviewing Illumination movies I defend, but I still have more I could discuss from the studio. Despite the common consensus that the movies are beyond, I could discuss all of them in more detail. I already have ideas for videos to make next Christmas, but I'm getting ahead of myself. Next video will be what I've done for every last video before Christmas. Review a DreamWorks holiday special, and this is one I've been excited for. I hope you enjoyed this video. Consider pressing subscribe and watching my other videos. The end.